welcome to Call to Serve. Is it really easy to be a priest today, especially with so many choices around? Is it really so easy for a family to decide that their son must become a priest? Is it easy for a priest to be among families, yearning sometimes even for that closeness, but living through it in the love of Christ alone? Well, in this program today, we are going to look at the life of a priest. Father Augustine Kaleli has spent more than 20 years as a priest and mostly in the family apostolate mission. We are so happy to have him with us share his life and the extraordinariness that he's brought into priesthood. Welcome to the program, Father. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We always have this first question about yeah. where the vocation started, about how you received that calling to be a priest, Father. When I think about uh, my own vocation to priesthood, the fact is that from the childhood onwards, I don't know, I had a, a strong desire within myself to live this life in an extraordinary way. Okay. That was there from the childhood onwards. And we have only one life on this earth. And this should be a life with an extra mile. That was my desire at that time. Okay. And at the age of, uh, I think, uh, 13, when I was attending the Sunday Mass, my parish priest was preaching about the uh, call of disciples, okay. how Jesus called the disciples. And that word of God has attracted me to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay. There was a, a word of God saying that you will become fishers of men. Yes. yes. Not fishermen, but fishers, fishers. of men. Yes. Actually, your life is to catch the people. And that, that may, might be my way at that time, I, exp uh, I thought that. Because, uh, you see, actually, vocation is an attraction. It's something that we are attracted to Jesus Christ. And my ch childhood had this experience for me that something more should be given. An extraordinary life should be lived out. And I found it in being a disciple of Jesus Christ. That might be the a most important way to live out a very good, fruitful uh, human life on this earth. That's so, why, uh, that's where I started my, I think, my vocation. So that is, it's, it's more like um, uh, you were pondering for a long time about you, about this calling or about uh, your way of contributing to the world and making uh, making a mark maybe. Right, yes, yes. You wanted to make a mark, Father. Yes. That That is actually in every child, isn't it? They all want to be the first somewhere. They want to race up somewhere. Right, And yes. that is what was also in you, in your life. Yeah, also. that means what I was thinking that what I have seen is people leading a married life. Yeah. Uh, they are leading a married life. They are uh, building up a family. I mean, bringing up children and building a house and buying a car and yeah. yeah, such and such things. Then my mind was thinking, oh, what is something extra in this family life? It is so it's everyone quite doing it. Every, everyone is leading this, yeah. But what was my, my mind is that, see, a lot of people are living in uh, suffering or leading a life of sorrows. Then how can I limit myself into the boundaries of a family? We have to go beyond. And that was the desire within me. Yeah. It is at that time that I came across with this word of God, yeah. that to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. So you and I was attracted to Jesus Christ. And how this attraction came into my mind, I have thought about it uh, earlier, I mean later, that is, it came through my parents. Because my Parents had a, a, a genuine Christian life that I have to be, uh, I mean, uh, genuine about that. Because my, uh, my, when I remember about my father, he was a just man, always standing for the truth. Very nice. And not keeping hatred to any people, even those people who have done something wrong to him, he was again uh, loving them and forgiving them. That was a very good example for me. Absolutely. And my mother leading a life in love with my father, okay. having a single union. That was, I think that was the inspiration for me to go beyond, yeah. to, uh, to travel an extra mile 
and become a, a, a disciple of Jesus Christ. How many sisters and brothers, Father, in your family? I have uh, two brothers and one sister. Okay. One elder brother and a younger uh, brother and a younger, youngest is the sister. And I'm sure in the closeness among, uh, with all of them, I mean, how did they accept that you're going to be a priest? Yes, when I expressed my wish to my parents, yeah. uh, my elder brother already said he wants to become a priest. Okay. Elder brother. That's then nice. the parents uh, <laughs> suggested two people cannot go to seminary. Only one of them can go to okay. seminary. Then okay. I used to uh, uh, discourage my elder brother. You need not to go to the seminary. I will go. How sad. How <laughs> sad. <laughs> that was, uh, at that time, it was, uh, I have done such kind of things. Yeah. That when a priest came to invite him to join the seminary, I said to my elder brother, this may not be a right path for you. For you. Yeah. That is I, mine. That is I, mine. I, I've already decided. I will, I will go for that. Yeah. And I waited for one more year and then I went to the uh, seminary. Yeah. So that what is. did he, how did he feel, father? Yeah, I think now they are uh, proud of me, I think. Okay. I think. And your ordination and all of that must have been very beautiful. Yes, actually. it went very beautiful. Yeah. yeah. When I joined the seminary, my mother used to say that if you, you can go to the seminary and become a priest, but if you become a priest, you should be a good priest, yeah. a model priest, an example for the people. Otherwise, you come back. Just to join the seminary is not at all a problem. You come back. Whenever you wish that you cannot become a good priest, you come back. She was asking you to be extraordinary too, just as you wanted to be extraordinary. Yeah, I think, I think uh, something, uh, God's plan yeah. behind it. And these words of my mother yeah. are always behind my life. Because if you become a priest, you become a good, good priest. priest. Yeah. A good priest means a, a, a hardcore priest. I mean, we become. Did that make you ponder, father? Did that make you ponder and wonder about what the good priest sure, is? Sure, sure. During my uh, formation years, yes. I always thought of that. If I can become a good, good priest. priest. So I, how did you differentiate that? How did you validate that? A, a good priest means a priest to the core. Okay. That, I mean, priest according to the heart of Jesus. How it's possible? What I experience in my life is, if you experience God's love, that is the source of becoming a good priest. The love of God Absolutely. revealed on the cross. What inspires my priestly life is, you know, there are, there are a lot of ex, uh, love experience from different types of people. But what attracts me to Jesus Christ is, the fullness of love revealed on the cross. Yeah. There is no other man or other person who have revealed the love of God in such a way. Absolutely. And on the cross, that has been revealed on the, the fullness. And this is the cross that attracts me to become his priest to the core. That means when you experience this love, you cannot but. Then you are, you are caught up. That is, the, that is what I have experienced. So you're like immersed in that love of right. Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. And I think this uh, priestly formation, especially yeah. the first years of my formation in the minor seminary, see, actually the prior experience that I had. Yeah. Yeah, I always remember a picture in my seminary life okay. that we prayed together okay. in a circle okay. before the Blessed Sacrament. And that's a beautiful experience Absolutely. in the light of uh, the candlelight and uh, evening. That's a beautiful experience. And you experience the love of God through the prayers and even through your actions. And you are even, even in your relationships, you experience God's love. Yeah. That is the uh, attracting point that I have learned in my uh, priestly life. Father, did you have second thoughts when you were in the seminary? Did you have to validate your calling? Yes. After joining the seminary, really I had thoughts just to withdraw from it. I mean, to go back. Sometimes I thought, because what my mother said, if you want to become a priest, be a make, good priest. Be a good priest. Yeah. That thought, but I can't do it. I can't do it. That was always there. I mean, my incapacities, okay. the way, the, 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 what I can foresee. You see, so always there was an awareness that I'm not sufficient. I mean, I'm not able to become a, a, a good parish priest. I'm a priest, but I'm not a good priest. Yeah, yeah, a, a good parish, a good priest. Yeah, that's okay. right. So I used to uh, ponder over this. How can I make sure? Okay. So uh, after the six years of formation, yeah. uh, I had an experience of one year regency okay. in the family apostolate center, 
with uh, Father Sebastian Totapoli. And at the end of this regency, used, we used to get the cassock. Okay. The, uh, and before that moment, I asked my regency director, Father, I, ha I am going through a kind of taking a decision. I mean, an, discerning. An, a discerning moment. So I would like to visit an old age of priests. Okay. I mean, old age priest home. So that I can meet some old uh, priests after living there, priesthood of 50 or 60 years, just to talk to them. So that I can design my own vocation. So, uh, what were you going to do there, Father? What were you going to find out from the priests? Because uh, I was thinking that after living 50 years of uh, priest life, they should be really charming. And they should be really graceful. That was my expectation. If you are not graceful after 50 years of uh, living priesthood, what life it is? It's so meaningless. To see if, they, if that was going to help you become the good priest? Yes. That means I want to make sure after living a, a life of priesthood, how will be my own old age, just to want to see yeah. that. So okay. I went to visit this priest, okay. and, and in this priest home, there were five priests. Okay. And I met each one of them, okay. and I had the experience that most of them experienced a graceful life. Grace. When we look, at, or look on their face, Praise we God. feel that grace yeah. of living this 50 or 60 years of priestly life. And I still remember one of the old priests, when I entered his room, he was reading a spiritual book okay. with a, a, a big lens. Okay. And I asked him, Father, you are not going to preach anymore. No people are coming to you for confession or something like that because you are already uh, all you're retired. You're, you're retired. So why should you read these books? And he was saying that the reading the spiritual books give you nourishment for your spirit. And the spiritual life, it is very important. And that continues. Yes. I, I mean, priesthood is not just for helping other people, but to experience the love of God in one, one's own spirit. That Absolutely. is, that even after you retirement, you have that experience. Yeah. It is through this life that you become a holy man or a yeah. woman. That's what my experience is. Yeah. So that's the way I validated my vocation. Yeah. Then so after that, found, I determined, yeah. yeah, God is calling me and I discerned it and I went forward. And then after that, I had never the uh, second thought okay. to come back. It was a final I, decision. I thought, yes, it, yeah. I thought that it's the right decision that I did. Father, in, in the mission, that is so many years in the, in the family apostolate as well, what were the challenges that you had to face as a priest? As a priest, the life is not so easy. No, it's not. It's not so easy. No. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, yeah, priestly life is, in a sense, it is a one-man uh, life. That means a single life, okay. in a sense. Yeah. Okay, there is Jesus Christ yeah. Yeah, with us. Uh, but at the same time, there is no intimacy as there it is in the family life. Yeah. And there are certain moments when we are or lonely. Lonely in the sense that before the criticism, yeah. we do something good and people criticize. And we have to suffer the criticism, I mean neg negative, destructive yeah. criticism, all alone. That is, I think, one of the most basic challenges of my priestly life. Yeah. That means we do with a good intention, yeah. maybe. And also, e even if we do with a good intention, People find there are always some destructive yeah. forces in the society. It is not possible to satisfy everyone not ever at, people. at all. And the, my way of doing is that I'm not looking for the satisfaction from all people. Absolutely. I mean, this, we cannot go forward. It's not. What we find we, in uh, consultation with the Lord, yes. that if something is right, my, my procedure is go forward, oh, yes. even in an aggressive manner. That I have done in my priestly life. If it is required, yes. It's it's required, required. We have to go forward then there will be strong criticism. What I'm saying that whenever we stand for the kingdom of God, there's always a destructive forces coming in. And it is actually a fight against the evil. Absolutely, Father. It's a priesthood is a fight, a continuous fight yeah. against the evil. Yeah. And sometimes we may think that we fly away yeah. from the uh, fight because we have to do it all alone. Yeah. Even our uh, friends, I mean, even our fellow priests, even they may stand against us yeah. in the moment of this fight. There are certain occasions like that. Even, even when we do something good, even our fellow priests or the even fellow men, 
they may misunderstand, even they may do something to distract what we have done. So that's uh, we all uh, alone, we have yeah. to uh, bear with it. Yeah. That is the, one of the most basic challenge that I have faced. But one of the beautiful uh, response that I have is, whenever I have gone through this kind of uh, loneliness, loneliness in the sense that- A lonely in, battle. Yeah, a lonely battle against the evil. Yeah. I had been supported by Jesus Christ in a miraculous way. Praise God. Because for example, in the day, at the end of the day, evening, when I am so tired and I feel bad about myself, myself in the sense that against the, uh, in, yeah. in the process of the fight against the evil, sometimes we feel we are rejected mm. and we are doing something worthless jobs. Mm. So at that moment, God intervenes in my life yeah. through some people that I have always experienced. Maybe some of my, my old friends or someone, they will just have a phone call yeah. or just have a talk and they encourage me that what you do is very good, very relevant for today's God society. Sends, God sends his angels to strengthen you. Right, that that's, that's my experience. And every morning, whatever be the tiredness that I had in the previous evening, whenever I uh, rise up in the morning, I have a, a new, uh, new ideas and also a very uh, a fresh mind. I think that is the gift of God. Yes, it That's is. the gift of God. Yes. I have heard and I have counseled the many grace. people, the even they don't want to rise up. I mean, they don't, they want to just sleep because they want, don't want to face the issues. Yeah. But in my case, I have experienced that even whatever be the issues, when I rise up in the morning, it's always fine. A very, very good moment that I have. And I Wonderful. can uh, dream about my own priestly life. Yeah. And uh, my own... Uh, um, what responsibilities for the kingdom of God. That's yes. what I have experienced. Yes, God. And uh, what about the delightful moments, Father? Those times that you felt so, uh, you know, so cherished. I mean, you, you felt your priestly life is really so beautiful. As I said, you know, from the uh, earlier childhood onwards, I had the desire to be an extraordinary. Yes, yes, yes. To go an extra mile. Absolutely. That's the greatest enjoyment that I have. Okay. Yeah. You see, as a priest, we can influence a lot of people. Yes. Thousands of thousands of people. As a priest, I don't know as a married man or a married woman, I don't know you can influence such kind of people. Maybe exceptionally it's possible. But uh, the priesthood gives you a platform where you can influence a lot of people for the good. Absolutely. To, uh, to um, proclaim the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I have experienced in my own life See, I am actually uh, engaged with the family apostolate. Yes, yes. The, my whole life is actually I have dedicated for families. I have found a special vocation within my vocation of priesthood. Yeah. That is the vocation for right. families. I have lived the, uh, 20, uh, among the 20 years. Most of the 90 years I have spent for the families. families. And what I see is when we help a, a family, their relationships are enhanced and they uh, are able to live their life in a better way, yes. that gives me the greatest happiness. Because in the name of Jesus Christ, a family is saved. Absolutely. And uh, saving a family is, the, what is the most beautiful thing is that a generation is saved, the child, the children, and these, these people are saved. So that gives you uh, a, 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 a fulfillment, a self-actualization. And above all these things, what I experienced before the uh, uh, Holy Eucharist, this we have something to offer. Father, are there any particular incidences that you'd like to share with us? Okay, I just want to share two incidents in my life. Sure. sure. Uh, once I met a, a, a woman. Okay. Uh, she came to me just to have a talk. Okay. And she was on the way to suicide. Oh my goodness. Uh, to commit suicide. Yeah, she said, "Just I want to confess and and suicide, commit suicide." The last confession. The last confession. Then I just uh, talked to her, and she was a widow, oh. and she was suffering a lot. A young widow, she had a very a pathetic experience in her life after the death of uh, husband. her husband. So she was uh, really uh, desperate, and she wants to end her life. But after having a good confession, she survived. She survived okay. in the sense that she took up the challenges of the life 
and now she is living uh, an extraordinary life for Jesus Christ. You, you had counseled her. Right, yes, 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 yeah. yeah. That was one of the incidents that I remember yeah. in my life. There are a lot of such incidents, yeah, but sure. one of the categories. Yeah. And there are, uh, one, another one is that I had the experience of helping a family which have, uh, the couple had been separated for 16 years. Okay. 16 years they were living in two places and they have only one child. That child was living with the mother. Okay. But after 16 years, uh, their uh, parish priest also helped and they came to us okay. and we could help them to rejoin. And when they rejoined, this uh, child came to me and uh, he said to me, Father, may I just hug you? So sweet. And then uh, that was a beautiful so experience in my life. So much gratitude and joy yeah, in that yeah, child, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, uh, that's the way I experienced the care for the families. Yeah, yeah? Uh, just a, a, a reward. Reward in the sense that we see the effect. Yes. yes. That's what I experienced. And you're seeing it so fruitful. And, fruitful in their and life. What you wanted is actually happening there. Yes. 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 yes, yes. Yeah. Father, you must have a very interesting vision for the church, I'm certain. Yeah. Would you like to share the vision, Father? Yes. Uh, my vision about the church is this. Church founded on Jesus Christ yes. is the hope of the world. It is. It's the hope of the world. It is. And one of the beautiful comments by uh, current Pope Francis that has enlightened me a lot, that is, church is not a bureaucratic society, but a love story. Yes. Church is a love story of Jesus Christ. Yes. See, the love revealed on the uh, cr uh, cross by Jesus Christ is told and told and told through the church. Yes. Lot of people, lot of priests, lot of uh, lay people, a uh, lot of religious women and men, these stories unfold. Yeah. This love. So the, the single focus that I have about a church is, church is a love story. Okay. All those people who are members of the church and those people engage with the church, they should experience this love story. They should That's become part of the love story. Part of the love story. They may tell the love story and also they may listen to the love story. Yes. So that is my vision about the church. Yes. For that purpose, I have a particular agenda today. Okay. That the agenda is that church will become a love story only through families. That means, see, the beautiful experience of love is happening in the, in the family. families. In the families. You see the couple living for 50 to 60 years, a dedicated, committed, faithful life. Yes. Where you can see it else? Nowhere else. Yes. Only in the family. And these people are the resources for the church to make it a love story. Today, Pope says that in the latest document, Amoris Leticia, he says, church is a family of families. Yes. Church is a family of families. So all priests, bishops, and all those who have engaged with the church in the various structures, what do they need is an attitude of love. The church should be a love story. That means even surpassing all these dis disturbances, love you should must, continue. Must continue. For that, we need to experience love of God. Yes. That's the most important thing. And this love of God can be experienced most basically in the family. Yeah. In the family. Because it is the, in the uh, cradle of the uh, love. The family is a cradle of love. That means where people experience true love and they are attracted to Jesus Christ. Absolutely. That is my vision about the church. Father, as the director of the family apostolate of the Archdiocese of uh, Ernakulam Angamali, yeah. um, what, is your, uh, what do you feel about the family situation today? And what are the challenges that you think are coming in the way of family life? Okay, the family life, when we want to realize the vision of the church that is as a love story, yes. the family relationships should be enhanced. Yes. That means the most basic challenge of a family is to develop a healthy relationship within the family. That is the most basic challenge. Now, I don't think so in Kerala or uh, in Kerala, I mean, uh, people are not financially poor, but they are poor in their love in their loving relationships. So, in order to make the kingdom of God realized on the earth, 
we need to focus on building up healthy relationships. I think that's a universal problem today. Yeah, that might be a universal problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so enhancing the relationships, empowering the relationships. And for this, uh, actually, God has given us a lot of tools yes. in psychology and also spirituality. And we need to focus on these tools and help out of people to develop their relationship. Yes. That's what we are doing in uh, Jivalaya Jivalaya Family Park, Family Kaladi. Park. That means we conduct different programs. Okay. We have, uh, for long years, we have marriage preparation program. But recently we have started, after the wedding, there are certain programs. For example, we have a baby shine retreat. That is a retreat for uh, pregnant couples. Oh, that's very How nice. to bond with the uh, child, child inside, in the womb. In the womb. Yes. Yeah? So that is very, uh, very typical Absolutely for important. the development. Yes. Because uh, a child, the future of the child, and it has to be nourished from yes. the womb itself. Yes. So that's why we are giving baby shine retreat. And also we give couples retreat. Yes. We help people in 13 areas to develop skills so that they might have a real love, genuine love, e equality feeling, and also an attachment, emotional intimacy. Yeah. That we need skill, and that skills have been given through this program. So it's a lot of nourishment that you're doing nourishment. for the family mission. Yeah, and also we are giving parenting retreat. In that, we help people to how to uh, parent their children in a most so effective way. You know, this is actually a ground level work. Absolutely. Through this, we are uh, uh, targeting, we are targeting a church as a love story yeah. of Jesus Christ. Yes. People having bad experiences within the family will not have an experience of church as a love story. This is yeah. very much associated. Yes. So from the ground level itself, we have need to work. And we also give uh, uh, programs for young widows. Yeah. So we have to enhance them, uh, themselves also. We've got to give, help them find new life. Right, yeah, yeah. Yes. And what we are doing is we are developing a network of uh, families, yeah. uh, dedicated, committed families to work for the families. That is very nice. That, uh, that's and and uh, family means youth. I mean, you must be facing a lot. You must be with a lot of youth as well. And uh, are they inspired, Father, uh, uh, looking at you and your work as well? I'm sure they are. Uh, sure, sure. There are young people attracted to this kind of apostolate. Yeah. But what, what I think about, when I think about the youth, what's in my mind is that, you know, the greatest attraction in the world is Jesus Christ. Is it so? Is it, it is. You see, the youth period is a period of attractions. Yes. Period for ideals. Yes. Ideas. And uh, you know, the one of the best ideas, one of the best ideas in the world available is Jesus Christ. That's wonderful. But Father. the challenge is that. It would be so nice if all the youth understand that as well. Yeah, but the challenge is that the beauty of Jesus Christ is not revealed here. Yeah. I mean, by in it's the today's context, in the it's today's, it was uh, revealed in, on the cross. Yeah. But that has not been the genuine way uh, carried out in today's world. Yeah. So peop we have to proclaim about Jesus Christ and the beauty of Jesus Christ. And the young people will be attracted to that. Actually, faith is an attraction. It is not doing some prayers or something like that. It is being caught up in Jesus Christ. I mean, an attraction to him. If we want to be attracted, we need to know the person. We need to know the beauty of the person. So uh, what my message for the youth is that you seek the truth and yeah. the truth will liberate you. Absolutely. And the truth is Jesus Christ. Yes. That's, uh, that's my message for the youth. It is so wonderful, Father. Yes. We are so blessed that you are with us today and we are so happy to hear from you, Father. Thank you. We, we will pray for your mission and we, um, we really are so happy that you are with us. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much. Yes.